Hey guys, what's happening? Out today with the new 17 HM Air MK2. MK is for Mark, M-A-R-K. That means second version. This is the follow-up version to my original 17 HM Air that I built off of a uh, Marauder platform, a 22 Marauder. Basic 22 Marauder valve, nothing special about it. Um, custom transfer port at about 0.151 in that gun and stock spring drill the hammer lighter and it's pushing about 950 consistently with a 24 and a half grain so right about 50 foot pounds this gun can double that gun's power at max power <laughs> at uh, a full 4500 psi and like power setting eight or so um, this thing will push a 24 and a half at 1250 right at 1250 1255 um, it can push a 33 grain round nose 172 at about 1170, but it consistently does it at like 1155, 1165, and that's still like 98 foot pounds. Um, and yeah, 172, not 177. This shoots uh, NOE 172 hollow points that I had done by Eric at Hollow Point Moles. Um, they drop at 24 and a half grains. So yeah, it's the same weight as a standard JSB. 25 grain dome um, and it is pushing those at 1200 for hunting purposes I fill it to 41 put it on power setting one and it'll shoot 1095 to about 1110 um, it kind of fluctuates in there it actually it's like a crawl gun it kind of actually regulates itself um, Doug did the work on it I picked out the color scheme Doug did all the work I got a zero decibel moderator which does a great job i really like this moderator i like it because it matches the stock and also it kind of lets you open it you can change the baffles around and it, it's got this gun pretty quiet but anyway we're going to talk more about the gun we're going to take that home we're going to talk more about the technical side of it let you guys know what's in this thing how it works and hope you enjoy the video let's watch her in action all right guys we have two shots downrange 135 yards and I'm going to click up for them so let's take a look at Streelock 135 yards is going to give me can't see what that says Two and a half mils. So we're gonna click up two. We're gonna go there, two and a half. All right, let's go ahead and take the shots. 24 and a half grain, uh, hollow points, roughly about 1100 feet per second. Yes, they're accurate at that speed. Okay, guys, I'll we'll give you a quick zoom back. We're on 57 power. We have a can and an egg. 135 yards. You just saw me click up two and a half mils from a 75 yard sight in. Let's go in. See if we can make these one shot each. The egg is on top of the white bucket. And if I hit it, you'll see it. All right, here we go. Can. Well, phew, that was easy. Okay, it looks like it hit high and to the right. Make one click for windage to the right. We're gonna go for the egg. And go. Oh, come on, dude. Come on. As Rick would say, come on, man. Are you guys serious right now? Hundred and thirty five yards.
Okay guys, for this portion of the video, we're going to talk about everything that is in this gun and why I chose a 172 caliber. Now, let's go back to the beginning. For you guys that don't know, for the guys that are not powder burner savvy, but are more air gun savvy, this is 172, not 177. This is a Green Mountain powder burner barrel, a rimfire barrel. This is for the 17 HMR. So this is a true powder burner barrels, one and nine twist, 25 inches long. Um, I'm gonna go over the features. We're gonna go over why I chose the 172 versus a 177 versus anything else. Um, and hopefully a lot of it'll make sense. Now, we're going to start and I'll put pictures up here to show you guys close-ups. This is the finished product. This has taken over probably a year and a half, two years to make. If you guys remember, my first gun was the, it was the 172 HM Air that was built off the M-Rod. This is what I originally wanted. I wanted an Air Force based air gun. And the reason being, the thought press process behind Air Force is that Air Force not only makes some really reliable air guns, um, not only do they make accurate air guns, but they make some of the most, if not the most powerful. And I'm not gonna get into who's the most powerful and all that other stuff because it's ever developing. But Air Force with its direct valve, which means here is the bottle, here is the valve, here is the barrel. It's directly in line with each other. That would have, is what affords this platform to be so powerful in bigger calibers. So this gun started life as a Condor frame. I ordered just the blue frame with the pistol grip, with the form, the power adjuster, the spring, the hammer, the trigger, a stock frame, the breech. The gold was to order Green Mountain Barrel and have my good buddy and machinist Doug Noble machine the barrel to fit the Condor and for him to do some work on a valve. <clears throat> so when it comes down to it, we decide, let's not use a stock valve. I'm going to make, Doug says, I'm going to make you a completely one-off valve. I like when he says one-off. That usually means power. Lots of it. So Doug machined everything, machined the barrel. He made me a complete valve. So he did his magic and behold, the valve was done. The barrel was done. I knew I was gonna put a carbon fiber bottle on it. So the next idea was to contact Mad Do Doug Russell at Mad Dog Stock. This is a RJ6A. I have this on my 338. I love 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 these stocks all i'm gonna i'm not gonna go in depth on every little part of the gun but just know that if it's on its gun it's because it's the best so we have a doug russell mad dog uh rj6 stock we have carbon fiber bottle we have a custom valve we have custom hammer we have a custom breech we have a barrel that was machined down, an aftermarket Green Mountain barrel that was machined down to fit. We have a carbon fiber sleeve. We have a zero decibel from Air Guns of Arizona, zero decibel moderator that I've also modified some of the internals to take the pressure and the power this gun is putting out. On the Mad Dog RJ6 stock, we have carbon fiber dip work done by Chad Simon over at Lethal Air. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic job. Holding this gun up, we have the LRA bipod. On the back here, Doug um, and Mad Dog Stocks added a, a monopod to the stock that screws in. So I can adjust the stock up and down. In the middle, on the OEM rail, we have an aftermarket um, scope rail and the reason why I chose this scope rail is because it's the length of the OEM Air Force rail. It basically reinforces the stock rail. 
Eagle Vision 34 millimeter scope rings that are fully adjustable for elevation. It is holding an Arkin SH4 Gen 2 6x24x50 mil first focal plane VPR scope. That's right, I got it, I nailed it. Yes. <laughs> And there's a lot of accessories that come with the scope, like the bubble level. You have the bikini covers. You have a you have your sunshade here. We also have here the Sec Meth. I hope I'm saying that right. Sec Meth digital gauge. I don't know if you can see it. I'll show you a close up later. But basically, you hit that, and it shows you the pressure that is in the bottle, and it also shows you how many um, shots that you're currently at and it'll calculate how many shots that you have left in your gun, but you have to program it. Here we have a custom trigger shoe. This was done by Doug by hand. <laughs> he must really like me. Um, the guy does great work and just makes awesome trinkets. So that's pretty much everything that's in the gun. Now let's talk about performance. As many of you guys might follow my videos, you know that in my first HM Air, the Marauder, I shot a 24 and a half grain cast bullet that I had hollow pointed from Eric at hollowpointmoles.com. And that gun was pushing them right at about 950, 955. And I'd get about 10 shots uh, or a little bit less, you know, pretty consistent in the 950s. This gun with the 500cc bottle will shoot the 24 and a half grain hollow point at a full 4,500 PSI fill at 1,250 feet per second. Um, it will shoot a 33 ground, grain round nose at 1170, 1175. This gun is capable of making on top for one shot or two, 101 foot pounds. That's right, 101 foot-pounds. That is not where I keep the gun, so let's, let's take it down a notch. With the 24 and a half grain topped off at 2,800 PSI, when I target shoot and tether, she shoots 1,050 feet per second with the 24 and a half grain hollow point with zero power wheel, no power wheel. Doug sets these things up especially to make a lot of power down with very little compression, if any, on the, on the uh, mainspring. So it's awesome when he does that. This also has one of his custom uh, hammers, anti-slap hammers. For hunting, I filled the gun to 4100 on power wheel one, and it will shoot roughly 1100 feet per second with the same 24 and a half grand hollow points for 25 shots. Now, the gun is not regulated. It does not do 1100, 1100, 1100, 1100, 1100, 1100, 1100, 1100, 1100, 1100, 1100. It does not do that. It will go from 1100 to 1110 and every once in a while it'll hit 1120 and then it'll come right back down into the teens and it'll stay in that 1110 to 1117 range for quite some time and then finally come back to where it started. Oftentimes I've started at 1095 on the first shot, right at 1100 on the second and third. It'll go up to 1107 on the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh shot. Then it'll start hitting the 1110 mark and you probably see an 1120 in there somewhere, a few 1120s, and then it starts coming back into the teens and it'll stay there. It will do this for 25 shots. And for hunting accuracy, you can't miss with this gun. You don't miss. And I'm talking about hunting. I'm not talking about target shooting. I know there's a, a spread, but keeping your ranges 200 yards and in, this gun will drop small game. It seems like no matter the velocity, whether it's 1,095 versus 1,110, it hits where it's supposed to each and every time. So that's the performance I'm getting out of the gun. The question of why 172 and not 177 or not 22 
You have a lot of guys follow me. Again, I'll repeat this again. I'm the oddball. I love doing things that no one else does because I hate, I hate having the same things everybody else ha has. That's my number one, always is. Number two, I do it because of the performance gains that I get over a pellet or even a swage slug now. With me shooting cast bullets or cash, cast slugs, I'm able to push them pretty fast and kind of tune my gun to shoot them very, very accurately. And they also have a much higher BC. So basically what you're doing is you're taking an air gun and you're upping the performance. I'm getting all the advantage that I can. Is it a powder burner? No, it's not. It won't even compare to the real 17HMR rimfire round. It will not even compare. You're talking a 17 grain bullet at 2,600 feet per second for like 250 something foot pounds. At best for one shot or two shots, this thing will make 100 foot pounds or 101. It's only shooting a bullet 24 grains. So again, this goes back to this is just air. This is not a powder burner. I'm not trying to make it perform like a powder burner, but if I can integrate some of the powder burner aspects into an air gun and gain all the advantage that I can, why the heck not? So why not a 177, why not a 22? Again, and I'll, I'll, I'm asking that question a second time so people understand, it's not a comparison of calibers. I don't do that. Uh, ultimately, when you talk about hunting, everybody's opinion varies so wide. Well, in the UK, we only have 12 foot pounds and we kill rabbits and squirrels all day. They're exactly right, they do, they do. And I'm pretty sure with that, they also pick the days that they hunt on, which are not as windy days as what we have here. The other thing is we're not restricted, so therefore I don't have to limit my power. I also live on the West Coast, which means my shots are wide. So the whole goal is every advantage I can have for hunting. If that means more power, more speed for the size of the caliber, then so be it. It's still an air gun. It's still an air gun. Least we not forget that. It's still an air gun. So for me personally, being different, having something different as far as the gun, having a, you know, the caliber dip being different, 172, that's the kind of stuff I like. I'm also a bullet caster, so why not have the luxury of shooting my own ammo? That's another reason. So we have all these advantages, we have all this technology, and I'm the kind of guy that I like to be part of that to a degree and build my own creations or my ideas. These are ideas in my head. These calibers don't come from something someone told me. These calibers come from me having my powder burner background, but loving shooting air because it's quieter, it's not as powerful, air guns are just friendlier than powder burners. Those are some of the stats, pretty much all the stats on the gun. The gun is completely finished. The last thing I had to add was an Arkin. I finally got my Arkin scope for this gun. Then I added the Sekmeth gauge before that. And we did some other little custom, custom work, but this gun is complete. This is the way it's going to stay. Stay tuned for a few clips of field performance. You guys are gonna like the way this thing hits in the field. And also stay tuned for more videos coming later. That's all I got for you guys today. Remember, keep watching. I'm gonna show some field performance. Hope you guys enjoy it. Hope you guys like this gun. I wanna give, again, another shout out to Air Force. Thank you guys for making a fantastic rifle. I wanna thank Doug Noble. Thank you for making uh, fantastic machining work. Uh, Doug Russell, thank you for making fantastic stocks. Chad Simon, thank you for doing fantastic work that you do. You do a lot. Um, and big thanks to Scopes. Thanks to AOA for having the zero decibel. Great, great moderator. It also goes really nice with the gun. I appreciate it, guys. See you on the next one.